You not only have to liberate the Haramein from the control of the Khalifa in Istanbul, but you have to put it in the control of those who will not themselves claim the Khilafah and will not allow anyone else to claim the Khilafah. And so long as these people keep control of the Haramein and the Hajj, the Khilafah can never be restored. Simple, isn't it? Simple, isn't it? And so that was why they had to make the trip to Riyadh to meet. What's his name? Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud. Correct name? Of course it's the correct name. Why are you afraid to mention it? <laughs> but Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud did not control the Hijaz. So he couldn't command the check for seven million pounds. Huh? He had to be content with something less than that. So what the British offered to him was if you would sign the same kind of agreement with us and violate the specific command in the Quran and betray Allah and his messenger and betray the Ummah, if you will do that, we pay you five thousand pounds a month. Would you accept that? Abdul Aziz says, yes. Yes. <laughs> and in 1916, Abdul Aziz ibn Saud signed an agreement with Britain. Yes. Which made of him a military ally of Britain, subservient to Britain. But when the Ikhwan, who were his military force, questioned him how can you sign this agreement with Britain and how can you accept this money from Britain 5,000 pounds a month Abdul Aziz Ibn Isaw says this is jizya <laughs> jizya is what they pay to me because I control them It was dust in their eyes and they swallowed it. And so Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud got away with it. Massive betrayal and a very dangerous plan is now in place. As soon as the Khilafah is destroyed, that Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud will be given what is known as the green light. Some